Hi guys, well with all the recent videos that we've been doing talking about tuning and air fuel ratio, I thought it would be a great idea to introduce to you the newest Howtech product, the new Howtech CAN NTK Wideband Unit. So if you've been following along with our latest series of videos, you'd be familiar with just how important it is to get reliable and accurate data from your wideband air fuel ratio meter. So for the more experienced tuners out there, you'd also know there's a multitude of different wideband O2 sensors on the market. The problem is, they don't all play nicely together. So you can't take a Bosch sensor and use it with an NTK controller or vice versa. In fact, you can't even take two series of Bosch sensors like the LSU 4.2 and the Bosch LSU 4.9 sensor and use them with the same controller. But rather, you have to match your wideband controller with the specific sensor type that you have. And with that in mind, this video is gonna be going through all the similarities and differences between Howtech's O2 sensor offerings, including the recently released NTK CAN wideband unit. But let's not get too far ahead of ourselves just yet. The first thing that we need to understand is that broadly speaking, there's two different categories of O2 sensors on the market. There's narrowband sensors and wideband sensors, and their use and application are very, very different. So narrowband O2 sensors typically have either one, two, three, or four wires, and they all work basically the same way. The output signal flips from zero volts to one volt when the air fuel ratio goes richer than the stoichiometric air fuel ratio of 14.7 to one. It then flips back to zero volts when the measured air fuel ratio goes leaner than the stoichiometric air fuel ratio or 14.7 to one. Now, this is important to know because it means that narrowband O2 sensors do not actually know and cannot actually tell you if an engine is at 13 to one air fuel ratio or 12 to one or 14 to one or any specific air fuel ratio for that matter. It only knows two values. That is lean of the stoichiometric air fuel ratio or rich of the stoichiometric air to fuel ratio. Now, if you haven't watched the previous video where we presented uh, ignition timing versus air fuel ratio's effect on engine output power, now's probably a good time to go and check it out because in that video, we explain why selecting the correct air fuel ratio is so important. And spoiler alert, it's much less about making horsepower and much more about engine health and longevity. So if you haven't watched that video, hit pause now and check it out because it's a really good primer for understanding what information you need to be getting from your O2 sensor. Okay, so if a narrowband O2 sensor can't tell us any specific air fuel ratios apart from 14.7 to one, and we know from the ignition timing versus air fuel ratio video that running an engine at full noise with an air fuel ratio of 14.7 to one is potentially catastrophic, then what on earth do these narrowband sensors exist for? Like, why do we have them? Well, the very simple answer to that question is emissions. Now, I'm not gonna go into detail on how to tune an engine to meet specific emission standards here, but broadly speaking, to pass pretty much any emissions test, you're going to need a catalytic converter in the exhaust. The catalytic converter is made up of multiple materials, each with a specific purpose of converting potentially harmful byproducts of combustion into harmless carbon dioxide, water, or nitrogen. For the catalytic converter to work effectively, it must be receiving a pulsating exhaust gas flow of mixtures that are rich and then lean of the stoichiometric air to fuel ratio, or 14.7 to one. Now, incidentally, this is exactly why in years gone by, manufacturers would turn off O2 control under full load and high RPM. Not because the engine would make less power, but rather for the O2 control to work, it relied on the air fuel ratio oscillating around 14.7 to one, which we know from the previous videos is far too lean for engine reliability at high horsepower levels. Getting back to narrowband O2 sensors. What are they useful for? Well, emissions control, specifically, they're very useful when paired with a catalytic converter to ensure that a vehicle's tailpipe emissions remain consistent. What they are not useful for is tuning your engine. Which brings us to the other type of O2 sensor, wideband O2 sensors. Now wideband O2 sensors typically have five or six wires and require some very specific electronic circuitry to control them. However, when controlled correctly, wideband O2 sensors are capable of accurately showing air fuel ratios 
anywhere from 6 to 1 air-fuel ratio to over 20 to 1 air-fuel ratio. This makes wideband O2 sensors the only choice for measuring air-fuel ratio when actually tuning your engine. So, let's take a look at Haltech's current offering of wideband O2 sensors. The most common of which is this CAN-connected wideband unit. This unit uses a Bosch LSU 4.9 wideband O2 sensor and has been the mainstay of Haltech's wideband O2 control offerings for a number of years. It's affordably priced, it's reliable, and it comes in both a single channel and a dual channel variant. Now it's safe to say this unit is one of the world's most tried and true wideband O2 sensor controllers on the market today. It readily and repeatably reads air fuel ratios down to 10 and a half to one air fuel ratio, and when installed correctly, has a long sensor life on most fuel types. However, this is where the limitation lies with this Bosch 4.902 sensor. When it's being used with fuels that are not petrol or gasoline, and air fuel ratios that are richer than 10.5 to one or 0.7 lambda, using a Bosch sensor under these conditions can significantly shorten the sensor life. And that is where this guy steps in, the new NTK wideband controller. It looks and interfaces with all Haltech ECUs identically to the Bosch wideband unit. However, the NTK controller does not use the Bosch LSU 4.9 sensor, but rather it uses the more robust NTK LZA08 sensor with a custom designed radial shroud to offer a much more robust sensor life at both richer mixtures and with alternate fuel types like methanol and race gas. So the NTK wideband unit similarly comes with a single or dual channel variation and will read reliably all the way down to around the two to one air fuel ratio range. With methanol drag cars, that's really what you want. Now, that's more than twice the range of the Bosch sensor. Of course, this comes at a cost and the NTK sensor and controller is a little bit more expensive than the Bosch unit. So let's assume you've purchased either of these Haltech CAN wideband units. Let's take a look in the software and walk through how to set them up with an Elite Series ECU. So both the Bosch and the NTK wideband control units are auxiliary CAN devices, which means they have their own control system and processor built into the control unit and they transmit the air to fuel ratio back to the ECU via a communications protocol known as CAN. Making the connection to the ECU is as simple as plugging the CAN cable into the mating CAN connection plug that's built into your Haltech flying lead or terminated engine harness. Now, if you're not using a Haltech wiring harness, it's important to note that because the wideband O2 sensor controller do draw quite a bit of current, you don't want to be powering up the wideband from the auxiliary CAN connection in the pocket of the top of an Elite 1000, 1500, 2000 or 2500 ECU. For that reason, your CAN wideband will come with a power cable like this one. That allows you to plug the CAN communications into the pocket cover, but source power from a switched 12 volt ignition source elsewhere in the vehicle that is capable of supplying at least four amps per O2 sensor. I'm going to walk through the software in both ESP and NSP software variants. And although the process is the same, the menu structure is slightly different for the two software versions. So I'm gonna cover both here just to be safe. Once you have the unit connected to your ECU and you're communicating with it in ESP software, because the wideband controller is an auxiliary CAN device, the first thing you need to do is go into the setup, main setup, and navigate to the devices tab. Here in the Devices tab, scroll down to the Wideband Controller Boxes section and select the wideband controller that you have. Now you can see here, there are two channel controllers that come in box A, B, C, and D variations. This is so you can monitor up to nine wideband O2 sensors on a single engine. Now that the ECU knows to expect a CAN wideband to be connected to its communication bus, you can go into the Functions page, select Wideband O2 Sensor, click on the input type, and select CAN wideband controller. Click apply and OK, and that's it. You're ready to go using your new Haltech CAN wideband O2 sensor and controller. It really is that simple. Now, if I was using NSP software, the process would be the same. However, I would access the auxiliary CAN device setup menu by simply navigating to the Haltech CAN system in the menu tree and enable the wideband controller box one here. I can now scroll up to sensors, turn on wideband 021, click on the wiring that's come up in red to indicate that there's an error, hit edit connection and select WB1 on the CAN network. And we're done.
So there you go. You now know the difference between a narrowband and a wideband O2 sensor. You know what the purpose of each sensor is, and you know why we might use each sensor type in different applications. We've also given you a rundown of the two CAN wideband controller types that Howtech sells, and what the benefits and drawbacks of using the NTK sensor and controller is over the Bosch. And finally, we've walked through how simple it is to connect and set up a Howtech CAN wideband O2 controller on a Howtech ECU. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, ring the bell icon to get all the latest video notifications. And don't forget to sign up for our newsletter for the most up-to-date pricing and product information. Well, I'm Matt from Haltech, and I'll see you next time.